Hey guys, welcome back to the tutorial. Today we're going to be creating our first class within the project. We're going to create a class for the Lunar Lander itself. We're also going to introduce the idea of how to draw onto the screen, draw images and things like that. We're going to implement our first game mechanics and we're going to see how to do some touch input. So let's jump right in here. You'll notice I've already started making some changes for today. The first one is that I changed our dark salmon to black for the background clear color. I've also added some simple drawing code, but we'll come back to this in a second. I've also added this new class, lander.cs, and this is going to represent our lunar lander object within the game. If we jump into the lander class, you can see that I've already added some, uh, some properties for this class. We have a position, so this is where the lunar lander is in the screen space. Velocity, so what direction it's heading in and how fast it's going. And I've also added the concept of fuel, which you'll recall is kind of a key component to the game. You know, you're, you're, you have this limited resource fuel that you use up as you jet around the level. And you need to make sure you keep an eye on it and you don't crash by running out of fuel. I also have a constructor here. And in this constructor, I'm simply setting up the position and velocity and giving uh, giving 500 fuel to the player. This could be whatever you want it to be. We'll probably change it later on to be a configuration uh, option, but for now, we're going to leave it as is. Uh, the final thing you'll notice is I've added in the Mango Lander content project, I've added a new folder called Sprites. Now, this is not necessary to actually get, put it in a folder, but I like to keep it things organized, and so I've um, put it into sprites and I've created this lander.png and this this file looks like this so it's just the outline of a lander that I just kind of made up um, it's not very pretty we'll definitely change it later but for now it's gonna it's gonna do the job okay um, it's actually red in here um, but in the real file it's going to be all white and the white part of this image is actually transparent so what that means is that if anything is behind the lander in the white areas you'll actually see through to the thing that is behind it okay so i've already driven uh, i've already written some code here to actually uh, draw out draw the lander and so we're going to run this and see what happens And there we are. You'll see a few things. First of all, I have the emulator on its side. Over to the right hand side of the emulator, there are a series of buttons. These th uh, third and fourth buttons actually rotate, rotate the emulator, like so. Um, you'll notice if I rotate it the other way, the phone adjusts its orientation and the lander pops up to the other corner. But let's go back to how we had it. There we go. Uh, the second thing you'll notice is that we actually have our lander being displayed. And it's being displayed in white and it's in the top left corner. So let's find out where this is coming from. Um, we jump back into our project by hitting the stop debugging button. And you'll notice that uh, in this drawing code here, we call this thing called sprite batch dot begin then we say sprite batch dot draw and we we pass in this thing called lander texture we give it lander dot position and this color dot white so lander dot position is that top left corner that's where that, that position is coming from and color dot white is where the color is coming from now there's a few things here that I haven't told you about. The first is Sprite Batch. So let's come back up the top and you'll notice this will be in your program too. It's, uh, a variable called Sprite Batch of type Sprite Batch, funnily enough. Um, if I click on this, it'll actually highlight all the instances of this variable throughout my project. And I can come down here and I see that in this load content method, Sprite Batch is being initialized. This will already be present in your project. One thing that I've added is load textures. And this is where the interesting part happens. So lander texture 
is another thing that I added, this texture 2D lander texture and we're actually saying content.load a type of texture 2D from this location and you'll notice that's uh, slash sprites slash lander corresponds to this path within mango lander content okay so what we're doing here is we're loading this image into this local variable and then down in the draw method we are passing that texture into sprite batch and sprite batch is the thing that actually displays a lander on the screen we call begin and end before and after all of our drawing and that's about it you also notice we're passing lander.position lander is a local variable again that I created and it stores a new instance of our lander class that we, cre that we created all pretty straightforward stuff okay and now you get to watch me actually write some code we're going to impl implement some basic physics today uh, we're just going to do the gravity for now um, how this works is we are going to add code to this update method update is called every frame of of your uh, game's lifetime so on every frame update is called and this game time object is passed game time contains both um, let me just open this up here game time contains elapsed game time which is the amount of elapsed game time since the last update so the amount of time that's passed since the last frame there's also total game time which is the amount of time since the first frame pretty straightforward uh, you should always create your update code to move things based on this game time uh, in particular game time dot elapsed game time the reason being that some frames can take longer than others um, especially if you know there are, there's like an explosion or something that means the game has to do more work for a few frames um, that will actually slow the game down and if you're not updating based on game time then um, everything kind of like messes up and your game moves in slow motion just for that little period of time so you're always going to want to update based on game time so here's how we're going to do it um, we're going to create gravity and gravity works like acceleration so uh, basically we're going to in increase the velocity of the lander every frame and then we're going to move the lander by how much uh, by the, the size of the velocity for that frame so first of all we're going to grab the uh, velocity the current velocity of the lander lander.velocity and we're going to uh, increase the y so the y is the vertical the vertical direction of the velocity so we're going to add to that um, we have to convert to float because uh, the uh, we're going to use lapse game time dot total milliseconds which is a double so if this is double time span dot total milliseconds so uh, we need to convert this to float because the uh, the dimensions of a, uh, a vector are float pretty straightforward and then we're going to save that back to the lander so lander dot velocity equals vel and then we're going to add the velocity to the vector's current uh, to to the lander's current position. So vector pos equals lander dot position, uh, and then position equals position plus the velocity, and save it back. Lander dot position equals pos. Straightforward. Then we build and run in the emulator and what you'll see is that our lander should oh I'm sorry I forgot one step so you'll notice uh, I'm using total milliseconds so every f every second this is gonna increase by a thousand basically so over the total over a total time frame of one second uh, this velocity dot y will have increased by a thousand is basically what this is saying um, which is way too much for our game um, we're actually gonna reduce this by a factor of 2000 um, is what I've found it kinda works out pretty well 
and when I run again and we flip back you'll see now our lander is falling and you'll actually notice it falls faster as it gets towards the bottom of the screen so just like gravity we get this acceleration effect I'm going to stop debugging and jump back now and the final thing we're going to add today is a really simple uh, touch input for this application um, so how we do this is we are going to again make changes into update um, these changes are not actually going to use game time um, but let me show you how you uh, accept touch input so the first thing we're going to want to do is get a touch collection object and we're going to call this touches and the way we get this is we call touch panel dot get state now we're going to iterate over each um, of our uh, our touches so for each touch location touch and touches we're going to do something uh, and the thing we're going to do is we're going to first check if uh, the state is uh, pressed so if touch location state is pressed then we're going to reset the location and the velocity of the lander so that's pretty simple we just say lander dot uh, position equals new vector lander dot velocity equals new vector and so now if we run our, our game basically any time I click on the on the surface the position of the lander is going to reset so I'm clicking now I'm clicking now and you can have a play with this yourself. It basically does exactly what you think it would do. Pretty simple, huh? So this is exactly how we um, accept touch in input for pretty much any XNA game. Um, if you are running this on a phone, there may actually be multiple um, items in this touches object. So in this way, you can actually handle multi-touch if your um, if your application has some use for that so that's pretty cool um, just as one final little thing I'm gonna show you how to actually pull out the location of the touch so we're gonna set the lander dot position to the touch uh, dot position and as you might expect this means that wherever we click the lander repositions isn't that cool so today I've shown you how to get started with um, creating our first objects in the game, setting up a couple of simple game mechanics, and how to actually draw to the screen. We've also taken a first look at how to accept input from the user. And yeah, I hope you enjoy guys. Um, catch you next time. Please make sure to rate, comment, and subscribe if you want to uh, keep up with when I've released a new video. I will be coming out with a new uh, Mango Lander video roughly once a week. So. Make sure you subscribe and keep in the loop, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.